Victoria with four new cases overnight. All four of those are in hotel quarantine. So today marks the 13th day, consecutive day, of zero local cases. That's a great testament to the hard work of the Victorian community. Uh, very clearly evidenced by the fact that we received 15,574 test results today from tests predominantly taken yesterday, so more than 15,500 tests. It's critically important that, in fact, the, the most important thing to do is if you've got symptoms, get tested. That's what this whole strategy uh, rests on and that's what the secret to our success has been. People going and getting tested quite soon after they register those symptoms and then us being able to put a public health response around them, their family and every single family. Uh, now, there'll be a Chief Health Officer release come out later on today. I can foreshadow that a number of cases that are linked to the Australian Open, uh, and I believe three of those four new ones today are linked to the, to the Australian Open. Uh, a number have, however, been reclassified as uh, shedding rather than being actively uh, infected, but I'll leave it to the public health experts to update you via that media release uh, and any further comment that you might need in relation to that matter. Obviously. Uh, from 6pm last night, we had those 25 local government areas uh, in and around Greater Sydney, so all but 10 local government areas, plus the Blue Mountains, plus Wollongong, uh, able to apply for a permit. That's, a, if you like, an as-of-right permit. Uh, and then isolate here for three days and get tested, and then you are released uh, once you have received a negative test result. Uh, I had hoped to be able to provide you with some updates, not so much on Sydney, because that's obviously less than 24 hours, but on the Brisbane movements, I haven't been able to get that data this morning, but if we can include a breakdown, for instance, how, how many have come back uh, and how many of those have got tested, uh, I'm more than happy to try and provide you with that state-by-state -state uh, breakdown, uh, most likely through that Chief Health Officer release a bit later on in the day. Uh, just finally, uh, before we're happy to take any questions you have, the, uh, the 10 remaining local government areas in Greater Sydney uh, they are, as I foreshadowed yesterday, they're being uh, reviewed by our public health team each and every day. Uh, the teams are talking, so Public Health in New South Wales and our public health team here in Victoria talk pretty much every day. We review the data, we look at what's happening there, and as soon as we can release uh, any of those local government areas, and that is to move them from red to orange, that's exactly what we will do. I, as I said yesterday, I'll just reconfirm, I don't believe that it'll be all ten moving at the one time. I think they're all a bit different. They all focus on uh, that Croydon case as well as the uh, Barala cluster, the one through the bottle shop. Uh, but again, it's being monitored very, very closely. And as soon as we can possibly make that change uh, and provide a permit uh, framework, an orange zone that is, that would allow people to come back, then we will do that. But those red zone, uh, red zone classifications will be in place not a moment longer than they need to be. All of these decisions are based on public health advice and it's that same public health advice that's got us to this point, and that's what will best safeguard everything that Victorians have built. I don't think I had anything else uh, to provide by way of update, uh, other than to foreshadow that there'll be a few of those matters referenced in the uh, Chief Health Officer's release later on today. The positive cases that have been reclassified to shedding, do any of those have any bearing on the three plane loads or in hard lockdown rather than train trouble? Uh, I'm not certain of that, James. Uh, I was unable to get a briefing on all of those matters this morning, uh, but I happy to commit to you that as much information as can be provided, uh, and that's the key point, are they, are they reclassifications that affect more than just the person who's been reclassified? Do they in fact take a cohort out of the hard lockdown? And, and, and that's not really the concern, well, to be frank, that's not necessarily the number one concern. Um, the number one concern is in fact the likelihood of other positive cases. So if you've got, say, 30 people who are deemed a close contact because they've been on a plane with a case and the case is no longer an active case but a, a, an historic shedding, well, then that would release those people from that uh, hard lockdown. Uh, the, the Chief Health Officer's release will provide as much detail as we possibly can about those reclassifications and any further details about the four new cases, three of which I believe have a connection to the tennis. One is a return traveller and is not connected to the tennis. And the key point here is all four of them are tucked away in hotel quarantine uh, under the system that we are running. No, I don't. I, and, I, and I'm sorry. Uh, I, if I had it, I'd give it to you, but I was certainly not in a position to be able to get that this morning other than the information that I have provided you. So you don't know whether any players are...
But they, but there may be, and if we have that information to con once we have that information confirmed and all uh, sorted out for you, then we will provide that to you. Uh, and if there's someone else needs to come and speak to you later on today, then we'll make that happen. But I think the release will probably make all of those details clear. Yes. 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 Well, I'm not particularly interested in providing messages to mayors in other other states. Um, they've got a job to do, so do I, and my job is following the public health advice. And the position that we've taken is, as I understand it, no different to the position that Chief Minister Barr in the ACT has taken. Uh, again, acting on the best public health advice. So as soon as we can release any and hope and ultimately all of those local government areas, we absolutely will. It's not a reflection on their community, it's not a reflection on them, it's a reflection on the fact that this is a wildly infectious virus uh, and this is a government, the government I lead, that follows public health advice. It's exactly what we've always done. And could you anticipate so that is my message to them. Sorry. Um, could you uh, that's, a, that's a real chance. Uh, obviously they've been able to Contain it. There was, and the reason it went orange on Saturday night was that they had, they had, there was, there was a, a, a breach out of hotel quarantine. A cleaner who then gave it to her partner. Then there was that unconnected case, but they had the same strain. The people who had travelled, people from, I think, from Lebanon, I think. But in any event, they pulled it up beyond that. They had their three-day shutdown. That was obviously very inconvenient, but that would seem, plus a big testing effort. Uh, and a big contact tracing effort, they've been able to pull it up beyond that. So uh, if, if they stay on the path they're on now, then hopefully we can have them green, and indeed hopefully we can have New South Wales green very soon very soon as well. Um, but the first thing to do is to have uh, the analysis done every single day so that the 10 local government areas turn orange, everybody who needs to come home can come home, uh, and then we can, we can talk about what the, the green status of different parts of the country are. That's probably... Uh, for Brisbane and Sydney, a little, a few weeks away, I would have thought, just because we've had outbreaks there. I'm not certain, but I'm happy to get an answer for you. I think the Chief Health Officer was very clear about this. The notion of leaving quarantine, but you would have to isolate, get a negative test, and then you'd be free and clear. Uh, Brett was very clear about that yesterday. Uh, if there's specific, if there's a specific you'd like me to follow up with him, I'm more, more than happy to do that. Just on that motion, um, there have been some, some questions about whether quarantine should be changed to the CQV. Is that a point? Uh, no, I made it very clear yesterday that, as has the CQV Commissioner, as has, I think, Minister Neville, uh, but I, was, well, I don't think I could have been clearer yesterday. Now, people are free to ask for things, um, but the answer is no. They knew what, they, knew what they were travelling into, uh, and we were not, we're not cutting corners, we're not making special arrangements. These arrangements are in place, they're the appropriate arrangements, they're based on public health advice, and uh, we wish people in, in hotel quarantine well, regardless of what reason they came, that they've, they've travelled here, um, whether it be a, uh, an Aussie who previously was in another part of the world or someone who's here for a major uh, event. Uh, you know, we had... We had we had cricketers who did uh, quarantine. We've got tennis players who are doing quarantine. We'll have other people at various points do quarantine. And we've literally had hundreds of thousands of returning Australians do quarantine. And it's very important because it's about keeping the virus out of the Victorian community and the national community. Because we know that if there's an outbreak in any part of the country, it becomes a national issue really, really fast. So, no, they are the rules.